Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KOAN Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. This show is made possible by the McPherson Tax Defense Group, 1-800-BEAT-IRS. BeatIRS.com, that's B-E-A-T-I-R-S. Serving Alaskans Americans since 1978 with two generations of tax defense attorneys. We're honored to have with us Chris Ann Hall, constitutional law attorney, former prosecutor, travels the country teaching about the Constitution. I just heard her at a Tenth Amendment conference a couple of weeks ago. She does an exceptional job in explaining to people what the Constitution provides for, how the federal government has exceeded its parameters. She's a disabled Army veteran, Russian linguist, mother, pastor's wife, and patriot. I had the pleasure of hearing her husband speak. Also at that Tenth Amendment conference, extraordinary speaker. We're going to get him on the show hopefully before we go off air on the 9th. We're going to talk today about the Oregon shooting that just took place. Chris Ann Hall has information that she's acquired personally as to what occurred. Uh, she actually was at the compound just a week ago, and she were still there like Pete Santelli. She might actually be under arrest. But Chris Ann Hall, thank you for being willing to come on the air and explain to our listeners what really went down during the shooting yesterday. You know, the it's very sad, Joe, the way that the whole situation has not only played out, but the way it has been portrayed. Uh, Governor Brown of Oregon uh, has a lot to answer for, and her her letter to Loretta Lynch uh, and, you know, to vicariously to Barack Obama was disingenuous at best and inflammatory and cowardice, if you'll just allow me to make that classification. I spent I spent three and a half days with the people of Burns. Uh, I didn't stay at a hotel. I stayed with family. And uh, they actually asked me to come out there and teach. And I spent um, two whole days, uh, two whole evenings teaching. We had a a two-hour training session on Monday night and a two-hour training session on Tuesday night. And we started off by laying the groundwork of the uh, sovereignty of the states, sort of like what we do at the uh, Tenth Amendment dinners, and then we went the second day and talked about specific overreaches and specific remedies. And I'm going to tell you what, Joe, if you walk through Burns, there is absolutely no indication that anything is going on at the refuge. As a matter of fact, the refuge is 30 miles away. The people in the community go through, Go. it's a small rural town. They're going to restaurants. They're buying groceries. I mean, you don't even know anything's going on until you see the FBI, the way they have completely overreacted to this whole situation. They've got big fences and concrete burns all around the the burn, uh, the Harney County Courthouse. They're, they have uh, a presence there, like they're occupying Baghdad. I mean, they look like military personnel. And the only source of fear in Burns is the fear that is being invoked by the federal government. You 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 see the people that the people that they call the militiamen, right? They're eating in the restaurants with us. They're staying in the hotel. They're actually improving the economy of Burns. There is no violence. There is no threat. There is no fear. And yet, we have to have somebody executed. Well, I want to get to what happened. When when you say that there are concrete barriers erected around the courthouse in Burns, uh, do you did you take any pictures of kind of the fortifications there? You know what? I should have, but I'm a terrible r- reporter, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. We just uh, we just drove by with our mouths hanging open because we it was just an amazing thing to see. Uh, and uh, we were there the day. I don't know if you remember hearing the report of how uh, the FBI had started sealing off parts of the hospital and uh, ordering the local doctors to uh, bring in more blood and make sure that there was an evac helicopter waiting to help people. I was there the day the FBI leaked that uh, to the media. And uh, it's, it, it was just an amazing thing to watch. It, it, it was almost uh, like living in a hyperbole. Because there was no reason for their reaction whatsoever. None at all. Well, so they expected there to be violence, perhaps initiated by them, 
Tell us, of course, the reports that have come out are very clouded about what happened yesterday. We put up a story at JoeMiller.us, a couple of excerpts, suggesting that, in fact, maybe uh, the individual who was gunned down had his hands in the air. I actually went to the Facebook page where the sister of one of the people on the ground reported that, in fact, his hands were in the air when he was shot, as she put it, in the face. I guess Ammon Bundy's brother got shot as well. Tell us mm-hmm. what you know about what happened and how you know. Well, I am uh, the legal, ad- legal advisor for the Coalition of Western States, and uh, we actually have a presence on the refuge. Uh, one of our members of the coalitions of, we- of the Western States has been living on the refuge uh, for several weeks. He was there with me uh, when I was there teaching, and uh, the presence of the coalitions of Western States was to provide a a neutral and uh, peaceful negotiating method. As a matter of fact, we were, our our member there on the refuge was able to negotiate with the FBI after the shooting to allow uh, those within the refuge that wanted to leave. They were, there were people that after the shooting wanted to leave, but they were afraid to leave because of the FBI presence around the refuge. And so our uh, COWS member I was able to speak directly to the FBI and negotiate free passage for the people who wanted to leave. Was, there, so a promise last of non- night, was there a promise of non-prosecution? Um, no, it's just a, a promise of we won't shoot you if you leave. You, you can go. Okay, There's, all right. I, they, don't, they don't know who's in this refuge. They've never taken names. They don't know anything. And it doesn't appear that they're really concerned about anybody. But uh, Ammond, Bundy, Ryan Bundy, and the people that they've arrested. And so the rest of the people at the refuge didn't seem to be a bit of a concern to them. They were just willing to let them let them go with free passage uh, as long as they understood that they are not coming back. Now, there are still people at the refuge who have refused to leave. But uh, the Coalition of Western States, we've pulled our man out. And the people who have refused to leave uh, have accepted no assistance from the Coalition of Western States, so there was no reason for us to stay. How many people uh, have Ammon, left? You, how many people have left since the shooting? Do you know? I I do not have exact numbers, but I know that there is just a very few of them left behind now. That's very very few left at the refuge. So tell us who left. Uh, I'm talking about the group that ended up getting arrested and and Mm -hmm. shot at, one person killed. Uh, Tell us who was in that group, what they were doing. Well, they uh, they were going to John Day, Oregon, uh, for a a teaching session, uh, somewhat like what I did uh, in uh, Burns uh, the two days that I was there. And as a matter of fact, when I was teaching at Burns, I didn't realize it, but the second day that I was teaching, Ammond and the people from the refuge were in attendance. So on Monday night of my teaching, we had over 300 people. On the second night, we had over 400 people. It was amazing considering there are only 7,000 people in Harney County, and they were wow. the ranchers and the farmers were hungry for education. So right. now we're having the opportunity to teach, and they were having another teaching session. The problem is this. Uh, Ammon and uh, the, rest, the, the people from the refuge were on their way to the teaching session, the, way that, the same way that they came to mind. They had been leaving and, and coming and going from the refuge the whole time. And um, they had family members waiting for them at the refuge. And the FBI set up a blockade. They literally blocked off almost 60 miles of this road and trapped them in on the road. And... Um, pretty much ambushed them. Uh, As we know from the audio testimony of the young girl who was actually in the car with LaVoy Finnegan, is is that he was cooperative, that he did put his hands in the air, that he had his hands behind his head when he was shot, that there were multiple shots fired at the vehicles, and not a single person from the refuge fired a shot, which is really disturbing the way many in the media are, are calling this a shootout, as if it was like an exchange of fire. There, was no, there were no shots fired by anybody from the refuge. And let me tell you this, that with all of the lead up to this, if there was not 
real-time videotape linkage back to D.C. of what they were doing, and certainly if there was not recorded video of what they were doing, that is just extreme. I don't know if the federal government can malpractice. I mean, that's pretty much what they've been doing for the last, you know, few decades right. but i mean the fact is is you know they've got it you know they have to have videotape you know evidence of what happened we're going to talk more about what you know as far as what happened at the stop the shooting after these messages we have chris ann hall with us stay with us be right back Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KON Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. Have online with me, Chris Ann Hall, constitutional law attorney, active, aggressive, and pushing the Constitution as it was originally intended, trying to keep the federal government in check, but that is a much bigger project than one person. It's going to take the nation as a whole. We're talking right now about what's going on in Oregon, the shooting that occurred yesterday. Uh, Chris Ann Hall was actually there a week ago. She's talking to people that were just on the ground there. And during the break, she mentioned that she's in conversation with the sister of Ammon Bundy. Uh, tell us a little bit about what she's telling you. Well, we know that Ammon contacted her and also verified the account that uh, LaVoy Finnegan was, was uh, shot while peacefully responding and uh, obeying uh, the orders of the FBI and that he, he had his hands behind his head and that he was on his knees. And so we, we have um, verification of that from two independent sources. So you you're know, talking, the, you're, you're saying that they're telling you he was executed. Yeah, he was summarily executed, and I, and I think that is a very um, appropriate way to talk about that at this point uh, because it's just it's insane. We know they had to have video of what happened. We know that. I mean, they would not be conducting something like that stop without loads of cameras, probably on their persons, probably maybe even in the air. So there's got to be evidence of what actually took place. And, of course, the people you're talking to have to know that as well. Uh, so you, right. you see this as pretty reliable information, in other words. Oh, absolutely. And not only that, uh, what people are, a lot of people are, have, are thinking and, and uh, wondering about a lot of things. And what, what people need to understand is that the, the FBI, the federal government, was actively disrupting all uh, communications and all uh, electronic equipment. I experienced that personally uh, while I was in, in Bern. Uh, and uh, with our, our guy on the ground, we were constantly having issues trying to get in touch with, um, with him because of the uh, disruptions of our electronic equipment. I mean, I... My computer, when we were setting up for the teaching, uh, just totally uh, went haywire and blue screened for absolutely no reason at all. And we were having trouble with cameras on phones and phone signals and stuff like that. So even the people in the vehicles when this arrest was going down, their communications were being constantly disrupted. So there was no way for them to video themselves. Now, here's the problem, Joe. It is true, and I do believe that the FBI will have had to have some kind of video of this. The problem is, will the people ever see it? Because the Patriot Act will hide that video from public consumption as a matter of national security, because you know they have labeled these guys as domestic terrorists. And, they will, and, and it will be a real challenge for even their attorney to get copies of that video, because the Patriot Act says that their attorneys even in defense, do not have the authority to have that videos if it's a matter of national security. Yeah, and this is the thing that people don't understand when they discuss the Patriot Act and they cry out for government to make them more secure at all costs. They don't realize how those guns have been turned inward, literally in this case potentially. Uh, but also, I mean, it is just fundamentally wrong that an American citizen is not granted the same I mean, the, the, the constitutional freedoms, liberties that were ensconced in the Constitution as intended – they rip them away, labeling them a terrorist. The Patriot Act is what they hide behind, and it leads to this kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, they, and of course the people on the ground understand that they're effectively immunized because of it. Now, I mean, if 
I, you know, what kind of reaction are you seeing? I mean, a lot of people have already speculated that the guy was shot in cold blood. What, what are you hearing in the blogosphere? What are you hearing from the people in Burns about what happened? Well, I have direct contact with the people in Burns, and I was uh, I was on the phone all night uh, communicating with them. And the people who were at the training waiting for the Bundys to arrive were contacting me. And as soon as they got the news of what happened, the whole place just just people were weeping and praying. And um, yeah, the time. people of Burns, the people have been Bur- of Burns have been in constant prayer and in a state of mourning. Uh, Lavoy Finnegan, I, I met him. He was such a wonderful man. He is exactly what you would think of a stereotypical Hollywood style rancher. You know, cowboy hat, cowboy boots. Uh, yes, ma'am, Southern uh, charm and just. A, a gem of a man, a, a, a father, a grandfather, a husband. He wrote a book, and I wasn't even aware of this until after he got killed, yeah. but he wrote a book entitled Only by Blood and Suffering, Regaining Lost Freedom. I, I've not read it. Have you? No, I have not. Yeah, it seems almost predictive of what happened to him. The immediate thought that comes to my mind, you know, whether or not you know, laws were broken, whether or not the federal government was in just position to prosecute any of these people, the fact of the matter is his demise, as described, is something that is actionable, Patriot Act or not. And I sure hope that he's able, his family is able to find an attorney that absolutely goes after the federal government on a wrongful death who shot him. I mean, this is going on and on and on, you know, and I, I'm i probably going to be held at fault by some in saying this, but you look at how these Islamists get tracked down by the feds. And of course, you remember the Boston Marathon, the younger brother. Of course, we weren't there. We haven't seen the videotape, so we really don't know what he did. But that boat he was hiding in, you know how many bullet holes were in that boat? It is an absolute yeah. miracle he survived that thing. Uh, you know, you know I the mean, the crazy thing is, is Joe, is regardless of of the charges that are going to come against these people. Due process. What we need to ask our, what, exactly. What do we need to ask ourselves is, does the federal government have the authority to initiate the death penalty on these people? And that's exactly how they're coming at this. They were firing at these people at uh, without any due process whatsoever. They're never, Lavoie Finnegan is never going to get his day in court. Because somebody decided in the government that what he did was deserving of the death penalty, and, and that judge, should never happen. Judge, jury, and executioners, what these groups are becoming, as it appears at least. And i got to tell you, based upon what we've heard from those that were there, I think it's incumbent upon the feds to come out with a videotape and show us what happened that justified that shooting. And if not, yeah, and I, somebody somebody needs to pay. Right. We, we need to be constantly taking back the narrative and making sure that we are demanding that video. Because I guarantee you I know enough about the Patriot Act that that's exactly what they're going to say. And they're going to use the Patriot Act as a shield to keep the people from seeing what really happened. And uh, and it's going to be, in my humble opinion, highly suspect if all of a sudden they come out and say, I'm sorry, there is no video. Well, then it becomes a matter of just pure and total incompetence. It's actually, it's not incompetency, it's willfulness. They did it intentionally because they intended to execute the guy. I mean, that's the only conclusion you can draw from those circumstances, if that's what it turns out to be. Well, Chris Ann, I appreciate the information you've provided us. Hope you'll come back and give us updates from time to time as, as circumstances develop. Appreciate all you're doing on behalf of Liberty. Stay with us. The Joe Miller Show will be back with another great guest right after this.